these are the internals to a Corvette T56 transmission. And I thought I would just explain a little bit about what's going on here. So to start off, this is the input shaft. This is what connects to the drive shaft, which is connected to the clutch. So when the clutch is engaged, this spins. When you step on the clutch pedal, the clutch disengages, this stops spinning. This is a long shaft here with the, these gear clusters that's splined on the other end. This goes into the differential, and this is your output shaft, so that when this spins, it makes the wheels turn. This has a bearing, and it mount, mounts on the input shaft. So they're all in a straight line, but the input shaft can spin when this one doesn't spin. And then this set of gear clusters, this is um, your gears for your shifting, and this always spins, because, or this spins with the input shaft. Your input shaft gear meshes with this gear right here, so when the input shaft spins, this gear cluster spins. So again, when the clutch is either engaged, it spins. When it's disengaged, it stops spinning. So the way this all goes together is it lines up just about like this, and all these gears mesh with each other, right? Now, some of these gears, like on this shaft, these three gears can spin. These are, are not fixed to the shaft. These two on the end, these are fixed. These are splined and fixed. On this shaft, these four gears are fixed. They're machined into the shaft. And then these two gears up here are not fixed. These can spin freely. The way this works is that when this is all spinning, some of these gears are spinning freely on the shaft, and obviously some are fixed. When you select a gear and you put the transmission into gear, that gear set will lock onto the shaft and then cause the output shaft to spin with that gear. So the way this works is, again, these are your driving gears. These turn with the engine with the, from the clutch. The smaller gear, the smallest gear to the biggest one here on the, on the output shaft, this ratio is first gear because the engine has to turn several revolutions for only one revolution of your output shaft. So, and then it works its way up. So this is first gear, this is your second gear cluster, and this is your third gear cluster. We're going to skip fourth for a minute. And we're going to come up here, and then this is your fifth gear cluster, and you'll notice by now we've got a bigger gear driving a smaller gear, so for one revolution of our input shaft, we're going to have a few revolutions of the output shaft. And then this one, this largest gear, spinning this very smallest gear, this is your sixth gear. So again, one revolution here is many revolutions here. Now fourth gear, fourth gear on this transmission is a one-to-one -one ratio, and that means for every revolution of the input shaft, the output shaft is also going to make one revolution. And really what it does is that it's going to lock with the synchros, which I'm going to explain in a minute. The input shaft right here is going to lock with this one. So this becomes one unit. So when, this, when the input shaft spins, the output shaft spins with it. And so that's your fourth gear. So fourth gear on this does not actually have a gear set. It just locks the two shafts together. All right, so how exactly does it shift into gear? So what I've done is, is there's this kind of toothed ring. So this has teeth in it, and these teeth slide on these teeth. This, this part is fixed to the shaft. So when this spins, the shaft spins. So this goes on. So this will slide, should slide right in place like that, all right? And then this is that first gear assembly, and so the first gear is going to ride on this needle bearing. That's how this gear can freewheel on this shaft. So we get this in place, get everything all lined up here. All right, so this, this is like that. So right now, first gear is freewheeling. This selector thing slides, it will lock in place in all of these teeth, See this gear has these teeth here? This will lock onto those, so it's half on this ring, which is fixed to the shaft, and then half locked onto the gear. 
and now this gear has to turn with the shaft, so that would be in first gear. And then if I want to go to second, this could slide backwards and slide and lock this gear on. Now, now all of these other gears can freewheel, but this one is now locked. All right, and this ring slides with a, a selector fork like this. It just goes on there. When you move the lever, this is going to slide one way or the other. Now I'm going to show you what the synchro does. On this gear, on this first gear, there's, this is a tapered face here. This part is tapered. On your synchro, the synchro is actually two pieces, but there's a little friction material inside here and out here. And then there's a taper inside here. This friction material is going to get grabbed by these tapered surfaces. This goes in place like this, and this goes on top. When you put pressure squeezing this pack together, you can't turn it. But if I pull back a little bit, I can get it to spin. I can overcome the friction. All right, when I push hard, it locks in place. This is a brass synchro. The reverse gear has a brass synchro, which has kind of little grooves machined into it. This is a steel synchro, which has an abrasive, uh, I don't know, kind of, some kind of abrasive material. It's a little bit like sandpaper and installed on the surface. So what does this synchro do? When you go to shift, again, we need to get all of these teeth on this ring interlocked with the teeth on the gear. So when you shift, the wheels are spinning, the gears are spinning, this gear is spinning. We need this gear to stop spinning so we can interlock these teeth. This will touch the top of this synchro ring right on the very tips of these teeth. If it's right on the very tips of the teeth here, it will allow a little bit of a push. So when you go to move the gear lever, it's going to start pushing this against this gear, which is going to cause this gear to stop spinning. The friction is going to cause this gear to stop, and then as it slows down and stops, it's going to lock into place. And now you're in gear and you can let the clutch out. If your synchro, this friction material, gives out, or if it wears too much of the taper away so it's no longer a tight fit, you push on the gear lever, and this gear keeps spinning. So you get that, that grinding noise as this can't interlock, like that. And then it kind of finally interlocks and you're in gear. So when you get that interlock, that grinding happening, it's two things. It's either the synchro, the abrasive material is wearing, or these little teeth on the top that, you know, that interlock with this. Really, this is what pushes, you know, when this lines up kind of peak to peak, that's where it gets a little bit of a push from to lock that gear when those teeth they can break off and so this can no longer push against that synchro so that synchro never gets a chance to, to squeeze down and use its friction to stop the gear from spinning. So that's what happens when you select a gear. One final thing I want to mention is how reverse works. So for reverse we need to change the direction that this output shaft is spinning. If it's normally spinning clockwise, we have to make it spin counterclockwise. So this is your reverse gear. Same type of thing. It's got a synchro. It happens to be a brass synchro on this, this one. And it's got its slider ring and everything which will slide over and lock it in place. But if you look in the end cap of the transmission here, you see another gear. They call this the idler gear. So this gear is going to be about here like that, and then this gear, the reverse gear on the on this sh shaft, and remember this spins with the, the input shaft, that's going to go here. So this gear is going to turn this gear, and this gear is going to turn this gear. So by adding an additional gear in the series, we reverse the direction of our input shaft.